What's going on, Eagles fans? It's Jay All Day here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to my last Eagles mock draft. That was 1.0. In this edition, we're going to do 2.0. We got over 5,000 views. It was one of the best long form videos I did on my channel. If you look on the screen right here, here has how my mock draft 1.0 fell based on who was left from the PFF mock draft simulator. We went Laiatu Latu. Some people loved that pick. Some people hated that pick. Just go watch the tape and I think we can convince you of why I'm doing this. Not only is he a great player, but edge defender is one of the most cap intensive positions for NFL teams. So if you can get a guy on a five-year rookie deal who's giving you 10 plus sacks, you could use that money elsewhere to really build your roster out. And with all the issues going on at edge defender for the Eagles, they brought in Huff from the Jets, but he was pretty much a part-time player with the Jets. We don't know how that's going to translate to a 17-game season if he's starting every single game. Josh Sweat regressed considerably, going from 11 sacks to 6.5 sacks from 2022 to 2023, and Hassan Reddick wants a lot more money, and I don't know if the Eagles are going to pay him. So then we went Javon Bullard, Edron Cooper, Cam Hart, Zach Zinter, Dylan Johnson, Drake Nugent, and Jalen Green to round out our six-round pick. I think we've got a lot of value here, guys. I think we did really, really good. We'll see how this particular draft board falls as the Eagles start to pick at 22 and 50 and 53. We need to nail these first three picks. Let's get into it. All right, all my fellow Philadelphia Eagles fans, we have two good corners to pick from in the first round. The way the board fell for us at pick 22, Cooper DeGene and Nate Wiggins are both on the board. Let's compare these two guys and figure out who is the best fit for the Philadelphia Eagles. Cooper DeGene, 6'1", 207. The talk of DeGene playing outside cornerback or safety or slot cornerback at the next level is not due to the lack of home position it's because he could truly be an impact player anywhere footwork ball skills explosive athleticism make him an impactful outside corner one with all pro potential let's check out his grades a little bit 76 coverage grade 78 run defense grade 63 man coverage zone grade 73 forced incompletion six coverage stops five two picks this year. Good numbers. I'm not completely blown away by them. Nate Wiggins, 83 coverage grade, 65 against the run, 78 with man coverage, 74 in zone. Ooh, missed tackles four. How many missed tackles did Cooper DeGene have? Five missed tackles, so about the same. 705 snaps. For Cooper, 494. So he almost played double the snaps and only has one more missed tackle. Cooper DeGene just seems like such a freak athlete that only comes around once in a while. So that's why I'm going to go with Cooper DeGene, the cornerback from Iowa over Nate Wiggins. I love his size. And you could put him in the slot. You can put him outside corner. You can put him at safety. And wherever he fits the team the best right now so maybe he could play safety next year and then go to corner later in his career cooper DeGene is my number one pick for the philadelphia eagles pick 22 round one the philadelphia eagles are on the clock twice in the second round 50 and 53 the rams and the steelers pick in between us the rams picked the quarterback in this mock and the pittsburgh steelers went tackle so we got to look at the board and see if that's going to you know, condition where we want to make these picks. I do love Roman Wilson. He is a super solid wide receiver. I watched his tape earlier today, actually. Javon Bullard is the guy I always pick in the second round because, to me, there's just so much value. He's so consistent. He's such a good player. Coverage grade, 88.8. .8. Missed tackle rate, pretty good. Average depth of run tackle, pretty good. Force incompletion rate, super high. Very, very talented player at safety. But Idessa Isaac, very good pass rusher if we want to go edge defender in the second round. Very good player in 13 games, 9 sacks. Pretty productive for the Nittley Lions. Jermaine Barton, I like him, but he's got a lot of off-the-field issues. Jonathan Brooks, the running back, is very talented as well. I like Chris Jenkins, the interior defensive lineman from Michigan. Very, very good player as well. Okay, here's my strategy with the 50 and 53 picks. I think the guy I like at linebacker will be there at 53, but I don't think Javon Bullard will be there potentially 
if we wait to 53 to select him. So I'm going to pick Bullard and hope the guy that the Eagles fans are going to be very familiar with when I show you him is going to be there at 53. All right, Bullard is pick number 50. And then the Steelers went Trice at edge and TJ Tampa at corner. That lets us pick a guy. All Eagles fans are going to be stoked that he's still available. And his tape looks really, really good. And that's Jeremiah Trotter Jr., baby. Absolute monster at Clemson. So good. 85 overall grade, 82 in coverage, great against the run, good against the pass. He's good everywhere. He's got to work on his tackling a little bit. I don't necessarily love the missed tackle rate at 16%. That's pretty high. But he's really young, so that's a good thing. He's only 21 coming out in the draft, six foot two thirty. so his tackling will get better. Some guys don't come out of college for another two years, so... He'll be a great player for the Eagles, I think. I'm going Jeremiah Trotter in the second round for the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, Eagles fans, we're picking again in the fourth round, pick number 20. I've narrowed our search to interior offensive linemen, tackles, and cornerback. I think they're the positions of need right now for the Philadelphia Eagles in the fourth round where we can find some value. And DJ James, the cornerback from Auburn, provides a ton of value at the cornerback position. 6'1", 164, he's very skinny. The dude needs to add some weight for sure. Being 164, he's not going to tackle that well. And not surprisingly, he's terrible against the run. But in man coverage, he's unbelievable, 84. This is a guy who I think can move into the slot for the Philadelphia Eagles. James brings the competitiveness and mentality you want from a corner. He lacks top speed and strength, likely to limit him to a rotational or spot starter role. This guy could be a potential slot guy. Jarvis Brownlee is also a solid cornerback. 77.9 grade this year overall. 78.1 coverage grade. 75 against the run. Okay on man. Zone coverage grade, excellent. And he's a little bit better of a size guy. Six foot, 190, almost 30 pounds heavier than DJ James. But let's take a look at some of these guards and tackles still left on the board. Cooper Beebe, I mean, it's just so solid, guys. Look at that, 79 run block grade, 90 pass block. I'm not even going to look any further because this kind of value in the fourth round at the guard position is great for the Eagles. And with Jason Kelsey retiring, we need some more depth at the position. Real quick, I just want to look at Christian Jones. Not bad. Hopefully he'll be there a little bit later when we pick. We'll see what happens. But Cooper Beebe is my guy. The Eagles are up again in round five, pick 26. And I think the most value in this draft is offensive line in the fifth and sixth round. I mean, these guys are so good. You can go Zach Zinter, 75-73, or... You go Drake Nugent, the center, 76-78. True pass set block grade is not great, 63. Zinter, 63.8. Nugent is 63, so they're about even there. And Keegan's just a little bit less of a player than these guys. I like drafting the center, Drake Nugent here, man. 80 grade in 2022. 78 grade last year for the national champion, Michigan Wolverines. The dude is a very consistent player. 76, 78 in run and pass block grades, good gap grade. The dude only gave up one sack this year. Drake Nugent is my guy. I know we're taking a lot of offensive linemen, but now we're up round five, pick 36. Trevor Keegan's still available, but I don't want to go offensive line. I want to see if we can potentially bring in a running back in this late fifth round pick to see if we can find some value here. I did like Frank Gore Jr., so he might be a guy that we could potentially pick up a little bit later in the draft. I don't know if he'll be around in the sixth round when we pick, but Dylan Lobby is really, really good, solid, 4.6 yards per carry. Dylan Johnson, 5.1 yards a carry, 88 grade, rushing grade, 88, a looseness rating, 54. But like if you look at Frank Gore Jr., I mean, his elusiveness grade is a 111. For him to be available this late in the draft, 5'8", 195, can kind of be like a, and he's a little short, but I mean, he's super elusive and kind of maybe he could be like a Darren Sprolesy type of guy. All right, let's see if there's any value at some other positions. Maybe bringing in a guy like Pritchard, a cornerback, who's got pretty solid numbers for Auburn. You know, he's not great in run defense and man coverage, 
184.61. Man, these grades on these offensive linemen this late, it's like, oh, how do I not pick Jalen Sundell here at the tackle position? Just like adding so much depth. I mean, this guy is 89 pass block grade available in the fifth round. I'm picking him. I'm getting a ton of offensive line depth. And these last two picks, we can't go offensive line anymore. This guy, Luke McCaffrey from Rice, pretty solid. 82. Let's bring in another wide receiver here. Luke McCaffrey, the wide receiver, pick 172. His rank's 181. Or do I pick my guy? Dorian Clark is an interesting wide receiver, too. Two very good years. I'm, you know what? I'm going Dorian Clark. Super talented guy. 83, 80 grades. And he was hurt all last year. And a lot of people said he could be a top 50 pick if he was healthy this year. I'm taking a flyer on him. In the fifth round. We got one more pick. Frank Gore Jr. is still available. What about Steel Chambers, the linebacker from Ohio State? Mm, nah, not my favorite. I'm going Frank Gore Jr. The dude is a stud. 111 elusive rate, 90 rushing grade. In 2022, he averaged six yards a carry. 4.9 yards a carry last year. I'm taking a flyer on him in the sixth round. All right, Eagles fans. To the left of your screen is my Mock Draft 1.0, and to the right is the new Mock Draft 2.0. They hated the Jeremiah Trotter pick, but they love my first two picks, A-plus Cooper DeGene, A-minus Javon Bullard. I think that Jeremiah Trotter, especially if you look at the linebacker position on the Eagles, to give that a D-minus, I think that's some horseshit. Jalen Sundell, the tackle, Dorian Clark. Which draft do you like better? I think I like my first draft better personally, but from a needs perspective, we have Cooper DeGene and Javon Buller two years from now will both be starting for the Philadelphia Eagles. Jeremiah Trotter has the potential to start this year. And then you have great depth. We add it to every position on the offensive line, guard, center, and tackle. They're all have like 80 grades. So to give them C-plus grades is trash. I love adding that depth at all these positions. We didn't address edge, defender, or interior defensive line. I think the last two years we spent so many picks on the interior defensive line. We needed to reshore and revamp the cupboard at offensive line, especially because guys like Lane Johnson are getting a little bit long in the tooth. With Kelsey gone, we bring in a replacement in Drake Nugent that can compete for a starting spot later down the road. I really like this pick in draft 2.0. Cooper DeGene, that A+, plus, him falling to us there, that pick is killer. You guys might like this a little bit better. Let me know in the comments below. Do you like 2.0 better or 1.0? I like 1.0 better, but you can't complain with this Eagles haul in 2.0. Cooper DeGene, Javon Bullard, Jeremiah Trotter really go after defense in the first half of the draft, go after offense in the second half of the draft. I love it. Leave me some comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.